Hello everyone, this is Mahesh here and welcome to the Celestial Quest. And I'm back with another video, this time on who else, but Rahu and Ketu. Today we are going to take a look at what Rahu and Ketu are and why they are called Chayagrahas. Rahu and Ketu are the intersection points where Moon's orbital path crosses the ecliptic plane. Let's take a closer look at the diagram on the screen to understand this. Let's first define what the ecliptic is. The Sanskrit word for the ecliptic is Apamandra. The Earth is tilted at an angle of about 23.5 degrees to its orbital plane. Earth rotates around its axis in this position and also revolves around the Sun. Earth takes 24 hours to rotate around its axis and about 365 days to complete one rotation around Sun. The imaginary plane containing the Earth's orbit around the Sun is called the ecliptic plane. This is shown with a light blue rectangle on the screen. The sun's apparent path through the sky lies in this plane and is called ecliptic as pointed out in the diagram. Why do we call it sun's apparent path? We all know that it is the earth that revolves around the sun but from the earth it feels as if sun is moving along this path over the course of the year and hence we call it sun's apparent path. We all know that the moon orbits around earth. Moon's orbit has an angle of about 5 degrees to the ecliptic plane. If you draw an imaginary plane containing Moon's orbit, then this will also be at an angle of about 5 degrees to the ecliptic plane. This is shown with the tilted rectangle on the screen. Moon's orbit crosses the ecliptic plane at two locations. The first one is when the Moon is on the ascending path. And the second one is when the Moon is on the descending path. The intersection on the ascending path is called North Node and we call this Rahu in Vedic Astrology. The intersection on the descending path is called South Node and is referred to as Ketu in Vedic Astrology. So this is the story of Rahu and Ketu. But why are these called Chayagrahas? It is well known fact that eclipses generally occur when the Moon is at these intersecting points called North Node and South Node. Let's understand what happens during lunar eclipse and solar eclipse. See the diagram on your screen. It is showing Sun, Earth and Moon. You might already be aware that eclipses only happen when it is either full moon or what we call Purnima or when it is a new moon or Amavasya. Lunar eclipse happens during the full moon and solar eclipse happens during the new moon. If you recall what you have learned in, during your school days, then during lunar eclipses, Earth is between Sun and Moon. So instead of Sun's light hitting the Moon's surface, Earth's shadow falls on it and it is called lunar eclipse. This is what I am currently showing you on the screen. It is a full Moon and the Earth is between Sun and Moon and hence Earth's shadow is falling on the Moon causing lunar eclipse. Also notice that full Moon is appreciably close to the North Node. Similarly, during the solar eclipse, the Moon is between Sun and Earth. And the Moon blocks the light of the Sun from reaching the Earth. So in other words, the Moon casts a shadow on the Earth. This is what I am showing now in the diagram. It is a new Moon and Moon is between Sun and Earth and hence Moon's shadow is falling on Earth causing the solar eclipse. Also notice that the moon or new moon is appreciably close to south node. The use of term chaya or shadow is used as moving into these Rahu and Ketu graha positions that is north node and south node points generally causes eclipses which is nothing but shadow of the earth on the moon in lunar eclipse and shadow of the moon on earth during solar eclipse. Therefore, there is also a story in Hindu mythology that once Rahu ate the sun. Now you know why Rahu and Ketu are called Chayagrahas. If you are curious and want to know why I said that eclipses generally occur when Moon is at these intersecting points called North Node and South Node but do not always occur, then continue watching the video. So why eclipses don't always happen when the Moon is at these nodes. The moon takes about a month to orbit around the earth. 
if the moon orbited in the same plane as the ecliptic that is earth's orbital plane then we would have minimum of two eclipses every month there would be an, there would be an eclipse of the moon at every full moon and approximately two weeks later at a new moon there would be an eclipse of sun so a total of at least 24 eclipses every year but as we all know that does not happen and there are two main reasons for that first of all for an eclipse to take place the moon has to be aligned with the sun and the earth in the ecliptic plane that is they all all three have to be in one straight line but since moon's orbit is inclined to earth's orbit by about 5 degrees so sun moon and earth are not always aligned in the ecliptic plane secondly an eclipse is to take place it has to be new moon or full moon that is amavasya and purnima this phenomenon occurs only when the full moon or new moon is appreciably close to either north node or south node this exact situation is shown on the screen here during the new moon and full moon positions the moon is in the ecliptic plane and so it is aligned with the sun and the earth in the ecliptic plane that is moon earth and sun are all in the same plane in a straight line and hence the eclipses will happen in these situations but now look at the next screen see the positions of full moon and new moon here when there is a full moon or new moon the moon is not aligned with the sun and the earth in the ecliptic plane it is below the ecliptic plane when it is a new moon and above the ecliptic plane when it is a full moon so the shadow of the earth will not fall on moon during the full moon and the shadow of the moon won't fall on the earth during new moon and hence the eclipses won't happen during these um, new moon and full moon positions hence we don't have 24 eclipses in a year i hope you now understand why eclipses don't occur every full moon and new moon positions that's all from me for now and i'll return with another video on vedic astrology next time thank you for watching